Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Daya Karamo Yesterday we were talking about the time after Lord Chaitanya took sannyas and how he went to Shantipur.
then uh, some more details. When he sent Lord Chaitanya down to Santipur, he went to Navadweep here to Mayapur or Nityananda. He went into the house of Sachi Mata. My mother Sachi saw Nityananda. He said, My boy, my son, my darling boy, and she swooned in ecstasy. Devotees were feeling overwhelmed with different emotions. They embraced Nityananda and bathed with his tears of ecstasy. But he calmed them down and told them the good news. You must come immediately. The Lord is awaiting us in Advaita Charya's house in Santipur. I have come here to take you there. So the devotees, who practically they weren't eating, they had all become thin and they couldn't eat, they, they couldn't do anything, they were just motionless in separation of Lord Chaitanya. So much deep emotion between these devotees. They became jubilant and largely and started loudly chanting, Hari Bo! Hari Bo! For twelve days Lord Chaitanya had been away. Mother Sachi hadn't taken food or water. Our bull didn't drink water for thirteen days and then died. Can't live without taking water, at least. She was just a saint by thoughts of Lord Chaitanya. So she encouraged, he encouraged her with, you know everything about Krishna. The supreme object of the Vedas is your son. He's the life and soul of every living entity. So Lord Chaitanya knows what's better for everyone. Just surrender everything at His lotus feet and live happily and peacefully. Now, Mother, please go and cook for the satisfaction of all the devotees. This is devotional service to Krishna. Everyone is eager to taste your cooking. If you remain fasting, then Krishna has to fast also. I want to, I'm extremely anxious to relish the offerings cooked by you. <coughs> So this soothed her and she went, she fed Nityananda and she fed all the Vaishnavas. She saw everyone was fully satisfied. Then she sat down to eat herself. The devotees were pleased that Sachi Deva, Devi had broken her 12-day fast. Enlivened by the prasadam, the Vaishnavas prepared to go to meet their beloved Lord with Nityananda Prabhu. Everybody knew about it. All the news came to Navadev by after 12 days. They knew about his sannyas, his wonderful 
Sanyas name. What was his Sanyas name? Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Meanwhile, I don't know, according to this says somehow Lord Chaitanya was present in Fulia village. Fulia is the village where Tamal Krishna Maharaj left his body. So there's many pastimes that happen in Fulia. As soon as people, the Ganges also goes to Fulia. Once we were going on Ganga safari and one of our boats got stuck in Fulia. It went the wrong channel and everybody had to get out of the boat and push it. It was a whole trip. All the men went. This Fulia is also where Haridas Thakur used to do his japa. So many atheists and fault finders who had been very critical about the Lord were now eager to reach Fulia with their friends. He was born in Navadi, but his real identity remained a secret. Out of ignorance we maligned his work and spiritual mission. Now we must fall at his feet and beg forgiveness. Only then will our offenses be exonerated. Thousands of people flocked to the pier. The boatmen were in a dilemma. Everyone wanted to be the first and they could not risk crossing the river overloaded with people. So like this there was some people made went in small dinghies. Some took upturned earth and water vessels which made them float easily like a inner tube, but they didn't have inner tubes in those days, so they used clay pots upside down. Someone made banana raft. Pregnant women also dared to go to the crowd. Blind and lame ones suddenly became able to see and just by remembering Lord Chaitanya's name. Or the lame people became healthy. One boat carrying hundreds found it impossible to make the other bank and capsize in midstream. Even people who didn't know how to swim knew how to float miraculously. So everybody wanted to go to, to show respect to the Lord. Millions of people were captivated by the infinitely charming face of the Lord. No one wanted to go home. Just seeing the lotus face of the Lord once. The Lord went to Shantipur. He arrived in Advaita Acharya's house. So there's different stories how it happened. Advaita Acharya fell 
at uh, his beloved Lord's lotus feet. He, arms went around the Lord's lotus feet and he bathed them with tears of love. Finally, Lord Chaitanya bent down, lifted Advaita Chari into his warm embrace. Now Advaita was soaked by the ecstatic tears of the Lord. He again felt his lotus feet in spiritual ecstasy, calming himself. And Advaita, the Lord sat down. Achyutananda was Advaita's son, just a small tot, maybe a couple, two, three years old, so he's not even dressed. He was playing around in the dust covered with dirt. He came up and offered his obeisances to Lord Chaitanya. He felt that with respect, Lord Chaitanya picked him up on his arms, in spite he was all covered with dust. Achuta, you know that Advaita Acharya is also my father. Hence this makes us brothers. Little Acharya Achuta replied, You are the well-wishing friend of all living entities. The Vedas describe that you are the original father of everyone. This greatly pleased and amused the Lord. And he smiled knowingly. The Vaishnavas were amazed at a little toddler's words. So these are not the babblings of a mere child. They have a deep import. Achuta must be a great personality. Then Nityananda appeared with all the devotees from Navadvip. When the devotees saw Lord Chaitanya, their dearest Lord, Shiva's Pand and others began loudly chanting and fell on the ground, offering prayers and tears at the Lord's lotus feet. These devotees were as precious to the Lord as his very life. He lovingly embraced each one of them. The devotees cried out in a pain of ecstasy and separation. Their cries purified the entire earth. And the pure devotees are way weeping in love of Godhead. You can cut, if you can hear a pure devotee crying in love of Godhead, it will cut your bondage to this material world. Normally we don't hear such ecstatic crying. But by Lord Chaitanya's mercy, everyone could hear it. So much emotion. The Lord Chaitanya told everyone, chant, chant. Haribol. He caught Nityananda Prabhu by the hand and spun him around in ecstatic joy. Advaita stuck up from behind and stole a little dust from Lord Gauranga's lotus feet. Put it on his head. Lord Chaitanya went into some extreme ecstatic symptom, weeping, shivering, horripilation, shaking in the body, laughing. All the Ashta cities, Ashta Satika Bhavas, all at one time. He was chanting, Hari! Hari! So he chanted the devotees and everyone got into an ocean of 
bliss. They weren't feeling separation anymore with the kirtan. They had been deprived for 12 days. These are devotees that every day would be a Lord Chaitanya Sankirtan party. Every day they'd be chanting with him, dancing with him. For 12 days they haven't seen him. And they thought they might never see him, so they were like hopeless. Now they were all seeing him. They're dancing with him, so they became so overwhelmed. Surrounding the Lord, dancing. At one point, some fell over one another and they started rolling in the ground, covering themselves with the dust of everybody else. Somebody took another devotee's feet and put it on his chest and it just was in the bliss. Haribo! Haribo! These were the kind of loving exchanges they were having. Some of these tears of joy were just flowing from his eyes, unrestrained. They couldn't contain their happiness. They had regained Goranga! Lord of the spiritual world was dancing, free from all cares with his associates. It was an extraordinary vision. Above the sound of the dancing, the singing of the Lord's name rang out loud and clear. Adwaita's house was resounding with sounds of blissful ecstasy. Lord Nityananda was fully aware of this. The only one. The Lord went and was embracing each one associate after another infusing them with love of Godhead, getting touched by the Lord. The devotees became mad with joy. They expressed their boundless joy, shouting, Haribo! Haribo! How would like to be touched by Lord Chaitanya and give you a blessing? Lord Chaitanya's pastimes are so special because the Lord as a devotee, he mixes with the other devotees so intimately. In the spiritual world, the gopis and the cowherd boys in Vrindavan, they have their separate pastimes. Cowherd boys don't mix with gopis, except Krishna and Balaram. The others don't. They have their cowherd uh, boy pastimes and the gopis have their pastimes. But in Chaitanya Leela, gopis come just like Gadadhar was, Radharani and so many other gopis came down. Cowherd boys came. They're all chanting with Lord Chaitanya and dancing in the love of Krishna.
suddenly the Lord he sat down. The road is Had more pastimes. And the Lord went to the Ganges and bathed, bathed. He frolicked in the waters with the devotees. Coming back, he saw a tulsi plant, watered the tulsi plant, circumambulated her. Yani kani chapapani brahma hattari kani cha kani tani prana sampi pradakshina padi padi Went back to the temple, offered obeisances, circumambulated the Lord, sat down and took prasanna. Says so when he was taking prasad, when he got up, devotees jumped and grabbed his remnants. Some of the old men acted like little boys. All do the Lord's divine potency. Someone said, no, no. Taking the remnants of sannyasis is only for sudras. You're a brahmana, so you cannot take. And someone said, I'm not a brahmana, I'm a sudra. <laughs> and someone said, where does it say that in Shastra? Anyway, I want Mahaprasad. <laughs> Someone said, no, no, I don't want any Mahaprasad. I'm just taking the empty plate. <laughs> <laughs> so many games are going on. When Mother Sachi, she came. And Many things we talked yesterday, some of the exchanges. That one thing I didn't say was, <coughs> Lord Chaitanya said that I'm hungry. Put me some prasada. This is one thing that Mother Sachi was super expert at. When she cooked prasada, she could cook so many kinds of vegetables, even vegetables that you didn't even know were a vegetable. <laughs> all kinds of green leaves. Once uh, they had prepared me a, here in Mayapur a Mother Sachi Sak Feast. Thirteen varieties of Sak. Sak means like spinach is one type of sak. But in Bengal that's called palak. Palak. But they have so many kinds of, they have pumpkin leaves, they have dal leaves, they have special plant called helencha, which is a creeper that grows amongst lotus flowers in lotus ponds. It says if you eat that, you get love for Godhead. There are so many different kinds of green leafy vegetables that they would prepare. Here now they even use uh, hemp. 
hemp leaves, all kinds of. So at the end, you know, I was just getting intoxicated, just taking spinach. But most of the people avoid spinach because it's bitter. So Lord Chaitanya gave a speech to all his devotees, don't avoid spinach. It gives love for God hit. You often eat the spinach, offer it to Krishna, you get Krishna Prem. How many of you here like spinach? <laughs> How many don't like it but they want Krishna Prem anyway? <laughs> How many kinds you got in Europe? One. You better eat up on your spinach while you're here. <laughs> it's very. This Helencha spinach is especially bitter. The one that gives the, relatively speaking, the Western spinach is a little sweet. They have the same one here, but some of the, they have, there's all kinds of different flavors. So Lord Chaitanya was glorifying all these different spinaches. Maybe you have to grow. You have some lotus plants in Bosnia? We have a similar place that uh, spinach. That's the Well, you have to learn how to, it's, it's a whole art to learn how to cook these different spinach. There's a lot of leaves you, you cook. There's a lot of there's ordinary leaves, like um, kalai. It's the, the urd dal. Herd dal leaves when the plant's very young also makes a nice spinach type preparation. The sweetest one, even sweeter than uh, is this uh, pumpkin spinach. Pumpkin leaf. Very sweet. Do you have that? See, there's all kinds of leaves that uh, can be made into a leafy vegetable. But you know. Or says something. I don't, I don't know if you get love in God yet. <laughs> well, Lord Chaitanya like green leafy vegetables, so if you offer it to Lord Chaitanya, you can get love of God. So he gave a speech and he took, and Mother Sachi made a big offering and put the Tulsi Manchari in every offering pot. When Lord Chaitanya saw the offering of Mother Sachi, he circumambulated the Prashat. Then he sat down and took the prasadam. Can somebody find me the Chaitanya Charamita when the three Prabhus went together and had the prasad? Nityananda was throwing rice on Advaita and everything. It's, uh, it's in English. Yeah. Chaitanya Charanamira. I think it's Madhya. Anyone knows which part of it? Where was it? It's in the beginning of Beginning of Madhya, Janadi. Beginning of Madhya Leela. So then he took this prasada. So the Lord Chaitanya, he'd get a bent over backwards just to make everybody happy.
Because in the Chaitanya Charitamrita Lila, he sat down. That time, Lord Adwaita made seats for Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda. And Lord Chaitanya said that, uh, now I'm a sannyasi. So I just want a little bit of simple vegetable soup, rice, dal, nothing, you know, nothing very opulent. He said, oh yes, for you we will just cook very simple, nothing to worry about. And Nithi Nana said, look at, I've been starving for three days, I haven't eaten anything. I want, a, I want sufficient to eat. So, in a different mood. In that past time, when Lord Chaitanya got into the room, he saw all this sabjis and rice and he said, oh, what a nice offering. So he thought, you sit down and I'll put a little bit on my plate. He didn't know that this, all of it was for him. Which, he said, I can't eat all this, I'm a sannyasi. So look at you. Don't cheat us. You take whatever you can, you leave the remnants. So no, no, I'm not supposed to relieve the remnants. I'm not that type of sannyasi. You can come in here. You can sit here. You can put some, tomorrow put some things here too. And um, anyway, somehow Dwaita cajoled Lord Chaitanya got him to eat prasad. But the whole time, My lost glasses got located. They were in the Arab Gulf. Oh, I can see now. There are glasses. Although Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was thinking that the quantity of food was enormous, Nityananda Prabhu on the contrary thought it was not even a morsel. He had been fasting for three days and greatly hoped to break fast on that day. Indeed he said, although I am inviting to eat by Advaita Acharya today also is a fast. So small a quantity of food will not even fill half my belly. Advaita Acharya replied, sir, you are a mendicant traveling on pilgrimage. Sometimes you eat fruits and roots, and sometimes you simply go on fasting. I am a poor Brahmana, and you have come to my home. Please be satisfied with what little food you have received and give up your greedy mentality. Lord Nityananda Prabhu replied, Whatever I may be, you have invited me. Therefore you must supply as much as I want to eat. Advaita Acharya, after hearing the statement of Nityananda Prabhu, took the opportunity presented by the joking words and spoke to him as follows. You are a reject Paramahamsa. <laughs> and you have accepted the renounced order of life just to fill up your belly. I can understand that your business is to give trouble to the Brahmanas. The Prabhupada gives a purport. There's a, always a difference of opinion between Smarta Brahmana and a Vaishnava Goswami. 
there are even smart opinions in Vaishnav Goswami opinions available in astrological and astronomical calculations. By calling Nityananda Brashta of a dut, a rejected Paramahamsa, Advaita Acharya Prabhu, in a sense accepted Sri Nityananda Prabhu as a real Paramahamsa. In other words, Nityananda Prabhu had nothing to do with the rules governing smarter Brahmanas. Thus, under the pretense of condemning him, Advaita Acharya was actually praising him. In the Avadut stage, the Paramahamsa stage, which is the supermost stage, one may appear to be a Vishayi on the platform of sense gratification, but in actuality has nothing to do with sense gratification. At that stage, a person sometimes accepts the symptoms and dress of a sannyasi and sometimes does not. Sometimes he dresses like a householder. We should know, however, that these are all joking words between Advaita Acharya and Nityananda Prabhu. They are not to be taken as insults. Advaita Acharya accused Nityananda Prabhu saying, you can eat up to 10 to 20 mons of rice. Four, uh, uh, Prabhupada says, a man is a measurement containing about four kilograms. Manas, 10 manas is 40 kilos, 20 is 80 kilos of rice. You can eat 40 to 80 kilos of uncooked rice. <laughs> I'm a poor brahmana. How should I get so much rice? Whatever you have, though it be a palm full of rice, please eat it and get up. Don't show your madness and true remnants of food here and there. So like this, Sri Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya were eating and talking with Advaita Acharya jokingly. After eating half of each vegetable preparation given to him, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu abandoned and went on to the next. As soon as the half the vegetable in the pot was finished, Advaita Acharya filled it up again. You ever found they do this in the Prashadam Hall? Eat something, fill it up. Wait a minute. You gotta be really fast. In Bengal, this is the custom to keep filling until you stop them. If you go to an Indian house, so you can't leave any remnants. Whatever they put on your plate, you have to eat it. So you have to be an expert blocker. <laughs> Don't talk to anybody when they're serving you. Know? <laughs> <laughs> Once someone told me that if you just say no, they should give anyway. If you say no, very emphatically, they should still give. If you block with the hand, they should give anyway. <laughs> Only if you simultaneously block and lunge and shout like a tiger, Rah! No! Okay, okay. But we don't follow this standard here. If you just block, they won't give. But if you go outside to some Vaishnav's house, they'll be very aggressive. And if you leave the remnants, they'll eat them. Take all your good credits. <laughs> you learned the hard way, getting sick many times. So like that, Nityananda, I mean, uh, Dwaita was filling the pots. So every time Lord Chaitanya, look, wait, wait a minute, it's already full. How much more can I go on eating, Lord Chaitanya said. Do not give up whatever I have already given you. Now whatever I am giving you may eat half and leave half. <laughs> Very humbly he made requests. May Lord Nityananda and Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya eat. 
So somehow Lord Chaitanya fulfilled all the desires of Advaita Acharya. But then again, Nityananda jokingly said, My belly is not yet filled. Please take away your food. I have not taken the least of it. After this, Nityananda took a handful of rice and threw it on the floor in front of him as if hanging. Wow! Well, two or three grains of the thrown rice touched his body. Advaita Chara began to dance in various ways with the rice still stuck to his body. When the rice thrown by Nityananda Prabhu touched his body, Advaita Acharya thought himself purified by the touch of remnants thrown by Paramahamsa Nityananda. Therefore he began dancing. The word avaduta refers to one above the rules and regulations, Prabhupada said. Not observing all the rules and regulations of a sannyasi, Nityananda Prabhu exhibited the behavior of a mad avaduta. He threw the remnants of food on the ground and some of these remnants touched the body of Advaita Acharya. Advaita Acharya accepted this happily because he presented himself as a member of the community of smart Brahmins. By touching the remnants of food thrown by Nityananda Prabhu, Advaita Acharya immediately felt himself purified of all smart contamination. So normally if, if you're a smart, that means you're like a fanatic there's two Brahmins, the Smarta Brahmins and Vaishnava Brahmins. So the Smartas are really rule conscious. So somebody's Uchista, the remnants, touch your body, they go, oh, I'm contaminated, I have to take bath, I have to do Achaman and this and that. But then Advaita, he took the opposite rule. So he's getting purified from his Smarta. Can tell him that's what he's thinking anyway. That's smarter, but he's playing like a smarter. So he's dancing in ecstasy. I got purified. His Paramahamsa has thrown his Mahaprasad on me, freeing me from all my contamination. The remnants of food left by a pure Vaishnava are called Maha Mahaprasad. This is completely spiritual and is identified with Lord Vishnu. Such remnants are not ordinary. The spiritual master is to be considered on the stage of Paramahamsa. And beyond the jurisdiction of the Varnashram institution, the remnants of food left by the spiritual master and similar Paramahamsas and pure Vaishnavas are purifying. When an ordinary person touches such prasadam, his mind is purified and his mind is raised to the status of a, parama, a pure brahmana. So the behavior and statements of Advaita Acharya are meant for the understanding of ordinary people who are unaware of the strength of spiritual values, not knowing the potency of food left by the bona fide spiritual master and pure Vaishnavas. My dear Nityananda, I invited you and needed I had received the result you have no fixed caste or dynasty. By nature you are a madman. To make me a madman like yourself, you have thrown the remnants of your food at me. You do not even care, fear the fact that I am a Brahmana. These are the remnants of food left by Lord Krishna. If you take them to, the Lord Nityananda said, if you take them to be ordinary remnants, you have committed an offense. Nityananda continued, if you invite at least 100 sannyasis to your home, and feed them sumptuously, your offense will be nullified. Advaita Acharya replied, I shall never again invite another sannyasi. For it is the sannyasi who has spoiled all my Brahminical smriti regulations. He's also joking. After this, Advaita Acharya made the lords wash their hands and mouths. He took them to a nice bed, made them lie down on their left side to take rest. I added left side. Left side down. He gave them two cloves and cardamom mixed with tulsi flowers so there was a good flavor within their mouths.
He smeared their bodies with sandalwood pulp and placed fragrant flower garlands on their chest. When the Lord lay down on the bed, a Dwayta Chai waited to massage his leg. But the Lord was very hesitant and spoke as follows to Adwaita Charya. Adwaita Charya, you have made me dance in various ways. Now give up this practice. Go with Mukunda and Haridas and accept your lunch. Thereafter, Adwaita took prasad with Mukunda and Haridas, and they all wholeheartedly ate as much as they desired. Maha Prasadam Ki! Madhya Lila, Volume 1, Chaitanya Charamita, Antya Lila, Chaitanya Bhagavad, Chapter 1. Any questions? Janu Dweep Das. Over in the Prasadam Hall, it's the custom that you open the leaves and remnants and you throw it in the, in the pile to the door, and the dogs take it. Does that mean that the dogs take your They're very advanced. There's one dog at the at the Goshala. When you go up, he goes, Gora, Gora. <laughs> you heard it? Sounds like that to me. <laughs> Everything sounds like Gora to you. <laughs> There was once a dog here in Mayapur. When the devotee, the devotees told me he'd go and pay obeisances to Prabhupada. So we sent everybody upstairs. That time we would have puffies and milk at night. Now we have his pizza and ice cream. And I don't know if that's an advancement, but. So I stayed down and looked through the lattice work. And I saw this dog go in lay the flat, prostrate obeisances, get up, and walk out. So you don't know who these dogs are. Which Prabhu didn't make it last life, came back as a dog in Mayapur. Once a devotee accidentally killed a cat, Prabhupada was very upset. He said, they're dumb bhasis, you can't kill them. You can drive them away, you can... But you can't kill them. You shouldn't leave remnants. No, I never do, but I... We do. How are we going to get served the Prasad? Okay. Who gave you this Goranga? What is it? I don't do it. 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 Don't feed me so much prasada. I'm a sannyasi. I have eaten for three days. I'm expecting to eat properly. Why don't you feed me properly? <laughs>
Lourdes feet also. <laughs> <laughs> what are they balloons? Yeah. <laughs> Balloon demons. Good. Gurudev, Paramahamsa is very good. आज देखो ना गुरुदेव के एम चिंता होना कुछ तो नहीं और सब पहुंचा रहे कि वो नहीं गुरुदेव देखे हो जाने को आसुनी हो रहा है बंदा साधु ना आसु गुरु गुरु आज बुझा कुछ सब तो हो जाए तो क्यों करा हमने देखो ना गुरुदेव के वह इश्कोन वह जेको ना गोड़ी मार वह जेको ना गुरुदेव के इस परे He's asking, he said, when we travel and preach, he's one of our top, so he's maybe number two Sankirtan preacher, one top, one of the old longest book distributor in Mayapur. Okay. He said, we go traveling, we see, meet a lot of Vaishnavas and Gurus, they're all their facade the same, we can treat everyone the same. He said, well, if they're bona fide, he said, hard to tell. That's his question. Yes? Tell your name and where you're from for everyone to know. Czech Republic. Czech Republic. Your name? Daniel. Daniel from Czech Republic. Not enough. <laughs> Yes, Daniel. Yeah, I just want to ask. Water. Flor Chaitanya get indigestion also sometimes. Sometimes. But not today. <laughs> <laughs> When he was traveling and preaching as a sannyasi, what is this? Once he got indigestion. Also, he got indigestion when. He had a feast at Murray Gupta, so he went back. Murray Gupta gave him some water and they cured his indigestion. But here it doesn't say he got indigestion. Once I was on a mission to find the birthplace of, not the, the ashram of Krishna Das Kaviraj. And I went up to the temple in Katwa. <coughs> and there the Acharya, the Sevaite of the deities, they have a hereditary guruship. It's from the line of Gadadhar Prabhu. His name was Nanda Nandala Goswami. One, two, three. Haribo! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> he wants Haribo, we gave him. <laughs> and uh, it was about 11, uh, about 12. So we saw the Lunar Arti, then I said, I want to go because I want to get back. 
I said, you haven't taken prasad. I said, no, no, but I had to go and do the Lord's work. I had to find this place. He said, well, you have to do the Lord's work and we have to do the Lord's work. I am the Savite of this temple. I act on behalf of the deity. And I say that if you want me to help you find this place and give you a guide, you have to take prasadam first. The Lord wants to feed his devotees. You want to serve the Lord and the Lord wants to serve you. So either you take prasad or no guide. So they're also quite special Vaishnavas. Although he drank tea. But otherwise he followed all the rules and regulations. I mean they have a few quirks, but I think they found them all highly respectable people to different degrees. Not ordinary, absolutely. But some Brahmins are smartest, some are Vaishnavas, some are kind of half and half. So, now it's technically the class is supposed to end at 5.45, it's a little bit over and uh, tonight there's the Sankirtan Awards at 6.45. There's also about 6.15, there's stage program, or what time? I don't know. 6.30. 6.30 stage program where they're going to have the premiere of the movie. There's Didi procession. And after the award ceremony, the Didi, but then there's also Kirtan. So there's a lot of things happening tonight. But for... Somebody, there were some people that didn't see me last night, I got overtired. So if they're Russian speaking, tell Vakeshwari. If they're male, speak English or Spanish or something, talk to Janudeep Das. And if there's anybody, I talk to him, don't raise your hand. And they otherwise, talk to Ratnavali. Any more announcements about the safari? Can they still register for a safari? We have here Gokul Rani, Daivi Dasi, and Divya Priya. You can get your booking special here for the safari. This year we're going to see the new temple at Tirupati and see Balaji. We're going to see other temples. We're going to see the temples around Chennai. We're going to see the temples around Ranganath. We're going to see the Madurai, Adikeshava temple, Rameshwaram, where Lord Ram built a bridge, Hanuman built a bridge. There's 21 kundas there. Each kunda has a blessing. You bathe in one, you get pure bhakti. You bathe in another, you get cured from all diseases. You bathe in another, you get determination. We get like this. So you go through these 21 baths. We get a wholesale rate because we're doing 150 people. It's total madness. You don't actually, they have buckets and there's wells and usually they pour the bucket over you. So many devotees, it's optional. Yeah, some of them we can go in, but most of it is pouring buckets over you. One bucket, you get pretty wet. We can try it out here. I have a bucket in my bathroom. You want us to give a trial run or something? No, the 21st time is go to the ocean and bathe in the ocean where Ram bathed, and Lakshman, and Hanuman. Twenty plus one, twenty-one. Twenty-one baths. 
Then we go to we just go in Kerala, Kerala for uh, Ananta Padmanabha Temple. Then we go up to Udupi for Rathyatra, Ma Mangalore for Rathyatra, then back to Mayapur like this. Pretty action packed. They claim you hope you're going to have nice facilities for everybody. Most of it is by train. 90% train rides, which is comfortable. You can lay down. We have the full, most of the long train rides, we have the full bogies, all devotees. Whole train car devotees. If you get the ticket early. Otherwise, if you come late, then we'll just have to go and buy more tickets and you may not get on the same train. I mean, you may get the same train, but not the same place. So it pays to get in the first 160, I think they have tickets already, advanced booking. It's possible. Has talked to Premananda Gore. Okay, Nityananda and uh, Lord Chaitanya have left some remnants here. <laughs> What's that table for over there? If you want books or CDs, there's a table over there in the dark. Yeah. <laughs>